While the bedstead was still hovering over the tarmac at Derbyshire, Dr. Alan Griffith developed a unique engine designed to lift an airplane upwards. The British Ministry of Supply held a design competition for an airplane which could use this engine for vertical flight. The contract was won by the aircraft company Short Brothers in Belfast. The plane was given the designation SC-1. The SC-1 was the first uh, research aircraft uh, flat rising, not tailspin, to use the principle of separate lift engines. In theory, these could be shut down for flying around on the wings and you use this for propulsion. This did not contribute to lift in BPRL. You lit up four lift engines in, in the case of this SC-1 aircraft and uh, having fired them up and decelerated, you landed on the thrust in these engines. Two SC-1s were built. The first plane was fitted with a propulsion engine only. The airplane's designers wanted to fly the SC-1 conventionally before attempting vertical flight. So, in early 1957, the first plane was shipped to the flight test center at Boscombe Down in southern England. On April 2nd, test pilot Tom Brooks Smith stepped into the hot seat for the first flight in the SC-1. Smith had finished a brief helicopter training course and had also flown the bedstead. With only a propulsion engine installed, Smith guided the airplane skyward on its first conventional flight. The first conventional flight was uneventful. A small drag parachute was released to help break the plane on landing. Back in Belfast, the second SC-1 was being fitted with its four lift engines. Engine run-up tests were carried out on a large raised platform. The platform was covered by an open grill designed to prevent the recirculation of hot exhaust into the engines. A wire mesh was fitted over the engines to prevent the ingestion of debris. The four RB-108 lift engines together gave the airplane 8,600 pounds of thrust. Fully laden, the plane weighed just over 8,000 pounds. Using simple math, the SC-1 designers knew their plane could hover. And the question was, would it be stable? On May 23, 1958, the SC-1 made its first tethered hover. The plane behaved nicely, and for the next five months, Test pilots worked on perfecting the delicate art of hovering. By autumn of 1958, the SC-1 was ready to be cut loose from the test camp. The first hover took place on October 25th. Tom Brooks Smith at the controls. In 1959, a unique series of flight tests was undertaken to close the gap between hover and forward flight. This was done using both the first and the second aircraft. The first SC-1, which still only contained a cruise engine, was tested in conventional flight at slower and slower speeds. The second plane was flown at ever increasing speeds. Once the first plane had slowed to 75 knots, and the second plane had reached 80 knots, test pilot Tom Brooksman was ready to push the airplane through its first complete transition. This took place on April 6, 1960. 